This Week in IT. Intel and Qualcomm are at each other's throats about performance claims, but if you're in the market for a new PC, especially a Copilot Plus PC, which should you opt for? Let's find out. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure, and Microsoft 365. Before I get started, I've got a quick favor to ask you. As we go live today, we're on about 9,580 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 9,600 this week. About 57% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. So if you'd like to see this kind of weekly news update from Petri.com, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. It's not often that we talk about hardware on this channel, but there's been a lot of coverage in the press this week about the Intel Lunar Lake PCs and Snapdragon X Elite and how they compare to each other in performance. Now, I have to say straight away a disclaimer that I don't have any of these devices, but I'm very interested in potentially purchasing one in the future. So I wanted to know, well, okay, there are lots of claims being made and counterclaims as it seems by Qualcomm this week, but who's telling the truth? And what are the most important things that you should really know? What are the four most important things I've managed to boil it down for this video? So we're gonna go through them one by one if you are in the market for a new PC and need to make a decision. Decision. So let's get started. So a little bit of background here. Qualcomm released its Snapdragon X Elite chips for PC this year, and they're the first processors to benefit from the acquisition they made, Nuvia, it's already three or four years ago, I think now, that was run by uh, some key people that defected from Apple, and they developed this technology to essentially rival the Apple M1, M2, M3 chips. So now we have have this technology for Windows that really brings a lot more power to the table and power efficiency and can somewhat compare to what Apple is doing. So that all changed this year. Now, Microsoft released a couple of devices earlier in the year on these chips, the Surface Pro 11, for instance. And then later in the year, in July, they released a new branding, essentially called Copilot Plus PCs, which use these chips and chips from other manufacturers like Intel and AMD. The main player here is Intel with their Lunar Lake uh, generation of processors, which have been rushed out to make sure that they can meet the performance requirements that Microsoft has been setting for these new Copilot Plus PCs. Now, because Microsoft isn't forcing everyone to move to this new ARM architecture and the X Elite PCs, there does seem to be a limited amount of information and reviews on these new devices, because unlike the at Mac M1s, for instance, when they were released, everybody rushed out to buy them. I mean, essentially, they were going to have to upgrade at some point anyway. That's not what is happening here. You're still going to have the choice between x86 and Windows on ARM. So it's been a bit hard to really gather real world information about these devices and how they compare with each other. But I've done my best to gather as much information as I can from various different sources and get an overall opinion of what's going on here. Now, most of the figures that I'm going to quote at you come from the review of a Dell XPS 13 machine over at Tom hardware and you can get this device in two different configurations so they've been able to do a reasonable comparison you can get it with Intel Lunar Lake or you can get it with a Snapdragon X Elite so let's have a look at what they discovered both of these devices perform well you know neither is bad so I think that's the first thing to note about this but there were three main performance differences that they noted and I'm going to add a fourth consideration to that myself now the first thing is battery life of course that's one of the main Main reasons that people would like to move to the ARM architecture. It promises much longer battery life and also to maintain performance when you unplug the device from the mains AC, of course. Now, Tom's Hardware discovered that the X Elite version of the Dell XPS had about 18% 
better battery life. But they also said that the Intel Lunar Lake has pretty good efficiency on battery, although there was no kind of real uh, end user test. It was they were just talking figures and benchmarks and all this kind of thing. They're kind of given the impression that if you unplug this thing, the performance is, you know, still pretty good. I've yet to hear kind of any real evidence that that's the case. It's quite hard to find that out on the internet at the moment. Now, Qualcomm and Intel have been having a go at each other over the last couple of weeks. Uh, various performance claims, various bits of information missed out, it seems, where it's convenient. Of course, that always happens when uh, manufacturers start to, you know, cherry pick essentially what it is they want you to know. So Qualcomm was saying, you know, that their devices are better, of course, but the one real thing that wasn't mentioned by Intel was multi-core, multi-threaded performance. And the Snapdragon really does outperform the Lunar Lake chips in that department. So one of the tests that Tom's hardware ran, they were able to use Handbrake. So a Handbrake test, this is software which is used for encoding and transcoding video. It's pretty intensive and they were able to show that the Snapdragon X Elite device was able to perform a handbrake test and complete it in twice the time that the Lunar Lake device was able to do the exact same job. So there's a massive difference with multi-threaded performance. What's also interesting about the Lunar Lake devices is that apparently that are actually slower in multi-core performance than 12th and 13th generation versions of Intel's chips. So there's been a slight decrease in performance compared to previous generations. Let's talk about graphics for a minute. The GPU obviously important if you're a gamer or you're doing video editing or some other task that's really graphics uh, intensive. Now, according to Tom's hardware, the Intel Arc processor that's part of the Lunar Lake package performs slightly better than the Snapdragon uh, equivalent device. But Tom's Hardware did make uh, one note about it that the 3D benchmark test that they use to compare performance for the GPU, there's only one that actually runs on the ARM platform. So that's another reason why it's been difficult to get information and comparisons is because a lot of the benchmarking tests don't necessarily run on Windows and ARM, so you can't really do a fair comparison. So while I highlighted these three uh, hardware differences between the different platforms, there's one other thing that you should really consider, a fourth thing that's worth considering, and that is software and hardware compatibility. If you opt for Intel, it's, you know, it's an x86 platform, of course, you know, the ecosystem has been around for a long time. You're not going to have any software or hardware compatibility issues. That can't be said for Snapdragon. Of course, the situation is getting better and better with Windows and ARM as we go forwards. Microsoft recently announced a whole load of vendors that are going to produce native software for the platform. But, you know, there are still things like Google Drive that we don't yet have, even in beta or preview form, running on Windows and ARM natively, or at all, in fact. I think that Google Drive doesn't run under emulation either. Personally, I wouldn't choose one of these Snapdragon devices or the Lunar Lake, to be honest, as a primary device. For me personally, at this stage, I don't think they can run software like DaVinci Resolve quite well enough at the moment. But as a secondary device that I maybe travel with or take to a cafe, I think, you know, the Snapdragons are an excellent choice of course, not least for the battery life. So I'll be waiting for the second generation of these X Elite chips. Uh, Qualcomm have already promised that they're going to focus more on the graphics. They know that that's the weakest link at the moment. So they've promised big improvements coming in the second generation. Dell have said that they are expecting to see the second generation of the X Elite chips sometime in the middle of 2025, and that they should start shipping in devices early 2026. So we've still got a bit of a wait before we see the second generation. But there are other things happening that you can should consider, of course. As I said, a lot of software compatibility is going to change. 
also Microsoft have just released the update to 24H2, so the update to the update if you're already on Windows ARM. It's a completely new update for x86 devices on Windows 11, but that should also bring some improvements in performance to Windows on ARM if you're considering one of these devices as a secondary machine or even as a primary, it might be good for you. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new X Elite chips. Do you have any experience with these devices or have you been able to compare the Lunar Lake and X Elite chips in devices that you actually own? What is the what is the real experience? Because of course benchmarks only tell one story. They don't necessarily translate into a great user experience. So if you've been able to work with these devices, I'd love to know what you think. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because that helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube and to grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with another video now on the screen about some bugs in Windows 11 24H2 and some new features coming for pass keys in Windows 11. But that's it from me this week and I'll see you next time.